So I'm not nostalgically attached to the original Top Gun. I've seen it, and I know it, and I like it. It's just not a childhood favorite of mine or anything, you know? I watched it recently enough that it's still fresh in my mind, and I will be spoiling it a little bit in this review. I won't be spoiling this new one, but the original, yeah, it's kind of necessary. All right, with that out of the way, let's do this. Top Gun Maverick. So Top Gun Maverick is the sequel to the 80s hit Top Gun starring Tom Cruise. It was released back in 1986, so a good while before I came into the picture. So now, 36 years later and after a few release delays, we finally have a sequel. So in Top Gun Maverick, we still have Captain Pete Mitchell, callsign Maverick, once again played by Tom Cruise. He gets called back to be an instructor at Top Gun, which is a training program for the most elite and skilled fighter pilots on the planet. We're talking, you know, military jets. Because there's a new mission to do, so Maverick is going to train this elite squad of Top Gun graduates to do this impossible mission. And now we have our Top Gun sequel, which... Dude, holy shit. This movie's awesome. First of all, I mean, Tom Cruise, I love the character of Maverick. Cause you know, in the first movie, he was the hothead, he was full of himself, and it gained him a reputation. Now, he's not the same guy. He's matured a bit, and he knows better. He's learned from his experiences, and really his world is shaken when Rooster comes into play. Miles Teller plays Rooster, his name is Bradley Bradshaw. Yes, he is the son of Goose, who was Maverick's old wingman back in the day. He died in the first Top Gun movie. So instantly, you know that there's going to be a big focus on the relationship between Maverick and Rooster. And yeah, that is a big part of this movie, and it's really a lot of what drives the emotional story of this movie. And it works really, really well. It's really well written, story-wise anyway. Tom Cruise and Miles Teller, they really play well off each other. They have really good chemistry on screen. You can tell they must have loved filming this. Jennifer Connelly's in the movie. She plays a new love interest for Maverick. Understandably, I guess, since Kelly McGillis didn't want to come back. And you know what? She's not in the movie that much, which is appreciated, actually. And actually, now that I think about it, I'm kind of wondering what point she served in the movie. Like, honestly, I can't really think of anything she contributed to the main plot. I mean, she was good in the movie for what she had. Oh, you know what? It was to keep Maverick's character grounded to reality in some way. You know, he's he's not just all about the military. He does have that human connection with someone else. All right, that makes sense. She's there to add to Maverick's character. So in that case, I guess Jennifer Connelly's character could have been more relevant to the story. But that being said, as irrelevant as she does seem at times, the more prominent emotional story between Maverick and Rooster, again, it was really well done. Because there was a story to be told there. Maverick was there back in the day when Rooster's father died. So what kind of relationship are these two going to have? The dialogue between them is really good. The acting was great. What can I say? All the emotional moments, they really landed with me. Now, as far as nostalgia or fan service goes, there is some in this movie, I'm not going to deny it. You know, there are scenes that call back to the original in a really on-the-nose way. There's not a lot of it, but there is some where it is definitely worth noting. Like the very beginning of the movie, the first couple minutes, is pretty much a carbon copy from the original. Not a bad thing because it got me right into it. I was like, oh my god, I'm seeing this on the big screen, that's awesome. The music's kicking on and I was glued. There was one scene a little later on that was also a lot like one from the original, and it was the one where I was like, okay, they didn't have to do that. But the good thing about these nostalgic scenes is that they were quickly over. They didn't overstay their welcome. They were there enough to remind the fans that yes, this is still a Top Gun movie, but we're not going to rely solely on nostalgia. That's how you do it, man. Tell your own story. Don't just copy the original. You can have throwbacks, a couple of them, and then move on. Good, yeah, this movie did it right. But folks, I've waited long enough. Let's talk about the action scenes in this movie. Yeah, holy shit. The jet action scenes in this movie are better than the ones in the original, and I will defend that to my grave. They're a lot better shot. The cinematography is a lot better here than the originals. And I saw this with Dolby Sound. It's pretty much the only way to see this movie. If you're seeing a movie about jet aerial combat, you gotta make sure that you have the best sound system available. And man, when those jet engines started roaring, you're like, oh yeah, it's on. You gotta feel it, you know? It's gotta be an experience. And the filmmakers knew it had to be that way. They're not idiots. The sound was amazing in this movie. Truly. And for the most part, the big jet action scenes, they were practical. They actually had jets out there. The actors were actually flying jets, and they had help from real naval aviators. Just all sorts of respect to that. Like, when you're watching the jets on screen, you're like, yep, that's really happening. They really filmed that, for the most part. 
Just makes it more real, you know? I mean, when CG is really good, it's really good. But there is something about practical effects that just enhances a cinematic experience. It's tangible, you know? It's really there. I love that shit. And the intensity. Yeah, that was pulled off superbly. When they're all training for this impossible mission that they're trying to pull off. When they're going over the exercises beforehand, you know, Maverick's like, this is what we're gonna do. And you see the reactions on all the students' faces, they're like, oh my god, wait, what is this madness? It's funny, there's some good humor in this movie, for sure. But then you're like, holy fuck, how are these guys gonna pull this off? Death-defying stunts, breaking the sound barrier. You're white-knuckling it, man. You're like, oh my god, I hope they make it through this alive. I was on the edge of my seat a couple times, I'm not gonna lie. As for the music, of course, the soundtrack was great. You gotta have that Top Gun anthem in there, man. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. And throughout the movie, you have a few classic rock songs to keep you company. One song that is more modern pop. For me, anyway, it felt like a really good mix. And of course, Hans Zimmer and Lorne Balfe's score is awesome. So no complaints from me when it comes to the music in this movie. Guys, in the end, Top Gun Maverick is one of the best movies of the year so far, if you ask me. I love the emotional story that it told between Maverick and Rooster. That's where the heart of the movie is. I love all the other characters, the other graduates. They're good characters too. You have some nostalgic throwbacks to the original. They were appropriate and appreciated and very fun to watch. The action was amazing. You really feel those jet engines every time. So despite a few minor flaws, I can't wait to see this movie again. And for Top Gun Maverick, I will say, go see this movie right now. Do you need to have seen the first one in order to appreciate this one? It doesn't hurt, but honestly, I would say no, you don't have to have seen the first one. Although I don't know why anyone who hasn't seen the first one would go see this one. So there's the conundrum, but I'm just saying. So Top Gun Maverick, have you seen it yet? What do you think about it? What are your thoughts on it compared to the original? And or what are your thoughts on the original? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace. Thank you.